Alrighty, well, let's try and take our minds off of it a little bit. Let's do our NBA Daily 10. 10 minutes on the clock. Let's get it going. Here we go. Starts now. Clock's going. Here we go. NBA from last night. What do we got? Anything good? Do we even care? Here we go. First game up. Kings, Mavs. Mavs get the win. 105-99 over the Kings. Anything good over here on this Mavericks team? Luka Doncic, 23 points. Nice clutch shot to really kind of seal the deal. Good job. 10 assists, 8 rebounds. Tim Hardaway Jr., solid production here finally. 16 points, 3 assists, 3 rebounds. Not the most efficient, but better efficiency than we've been seeing. So we'll give him a little bit of a you know benefit of the doubt a little bit. 4 of 11 from the 3, 5 of 14 from the field. We'll give it to him. Dwight Powell still at the five, still no Chris Depp Porzingis back here, um, and they still find a way to win, so we give them credit again. Uh, Dwight Powell, 12 points, 8 rebounds. Maxi Kleber, 7 points, 5 rebounds at the four. Only played for 7 minutes, though, in the starting lineup. And then Dorian, Dorian Finney-Smith, 13 points. Off the bench, solid production by Frank Nicotelina, uh, 12 points, 2 assists, 3 rebounds. Mavs get the win. Kings, anything good here? Buddy Heald off the bench, playing 30 minutes, 11 points, 8 rebounds, 3 of 12 from the 3. Classic Buddy Heald game, and we know they're trying to get rid of him. De'Aaron Fox at the 1, 14 points, 8 rebounds. Coming up a little bit short there, a little bit small. Raquan Holmes at the 5, 22 points, 13 rebounds. He's having a real good season so far. And then, uh, you know, the, uh, Davian Mitchell still trying to find his footing a little bit here off the bench. 6 points, 3 assists. Minus two on the floor in 25 minutes. So Mavericks get the win. Back on track here, 105-99. Next game up here. And, man, oh, man, this Hornets team, I'm liking them, folks. And another big win here by them over the Blazers, winning 125-113. And I'm loving now that Terry Rozier is back in the starting lineup. We get Kelly Oubre Jr. coming off the bench. And this is exactly what we want here. Kelly Oubre Jr. coming off the bench. He's been in the starting lineup uh, since Terry Rozier has been out a couple of games here. And uh, they are back to winning with Kelly Oubre Jr. coming off the bench. And he put up 26 points off the bench. He still played 31 minutes off the bench. Still coming off the bench. But you know, this is what we like to see out of them, kind of helping running the second team a little bit. Uh, 26 points, 5 assists, 7 rebounds, a great night. LaMelo Ball, 27 points, 7 assists, 9 rebounds, fantastic as well. Terry Rogier back in action here at the 2, 14 points, 5 assists, 2 rebounds, 4 of 9 from the 3, absolutely fantastic. Mason Plumley, 4 points, 6 rebounds, all right. Miles Bridges, 19 points, 9 assists. Gordon Hayward, 12 points, 5 rebounds. So, overall, everybody getting it done. P.J. Washington off the bench, 17 points on 8 of 8 from the field, folks. Absolutely fantastic. So, Hornets back on track here. Now that they've got everybody involved, really kind of the main players back involved here on this Hornets starting lineup and the bench, and they're looking good. The Blazers, Damian Lillard, unfortunate. I mean, he's playing okay. Obviously not as the level that we've kind of been seeing him the last, you know, five years that he's kind of really been taking over the league and proving that, hey, I'm an A1 tier one option out here. Never that, not that there was like any true uh, questions about Damian Lillard being great, but not really kind of being as great as he has been in the past. 14 points, 12 assists, real solid, but not efficient. 2 of 14 from the 3 and 5 of 20 from the field. That's only 25%. CJ McCollum, 25 points, picked up the slack in scoring, 8 assists. Unfortunately, was a minus 18 on the floor. Nurchich still playing the five here, 13 points, 14 rebounds, fantastic. Norma Powell, 14 points, five assists, three rebounds, but a minus 21 on the floor, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, defense has to step it up a little bit. They just get outscored 125, 113, and they lose. And we get the Jazz at the Bucks, and the Bucks still missing some key players. Drew Holiday and um, Brooke Lopez at the five. So, you know, missing two big starters here. The offense is not on point. I don't think they've scored over 100 points without those two players. Um, you know, that's definitely classic because that's what those players do. Uh, you know, getting it done from the outside with Drew Holiday, facilitating the floor, and Brooke Lopez down low, able to kind of eat and give us the, about 10 to 15 points and 10 rebounds a game. That's missing from this lineup. So, George Hill filling in at the one still, 11.6 rebounds, two assists. Not bad, a plus seven. We give the man credit. 
Thanasis Antetokounmpo, Giannis' brother, filling in at the five and not really doing the greatest. Ten points, nine rebounds, a minus ten on the floor. Not terrible overall, uh, but not as productive as Brook Lopez is. But Thanasis, you know, I mean, he barely ever starts. He barely gets any real great, meaningful playing time. So I do like what this Bucks team is doing, finding out um, other players here, other rotations real early on in the season. And it's only due to injury, but they're still getting some nice experience here and seeing if they can kind of coach up and get Thanasis and Atacumpo some real game time minutes under his belt here if they have to use them, um, you know, come at the end of the season in the playoffs or whatever it is. So at least they're getting some good experience out there and we'll see if they can kind of, you know, fine tune it throughout the season. Grayson Allen took 10 threes, 5 of 10 from the threes. So once again, we are still liking what we're getting from Grayson Allen here um, on this Bucks team. They're just not 100% healthy, and we're not going to blame that on Grayson Allen. So uh, we are still liking this Bucks team when they get back full healthy. Grayson Allen, 18 points, 6 rebounds, a minus 3 on the floor. Not bad. In a how many point loss, we get a... Uh, 13 point 12 point loss excuse me so not bad overall here by Grayson Allen Giannis 25 points six assists seven rebounds classic game two steals two blocks all of that unfortunately just didn't have that scoring uh, to kind of help him out a little bit and then Pat Connaughton five points five rebounds and then for this Jazz team, everybody just getting it done. I mean, Donovan Mitchell, 28 points. Mike Connolly, 20 points. Fantastic. Rudy Gobert, 19 points, 13 rebounds. Bogdanovich, 14 points on only one of five from three. So definitely got to clean up. Both Bogdanovich has definitely got to clean up the threes a little bit. Uh, you know, we were shouting them out every single game, every single day last season. And they've just been a little lackluster out of the gate. So we'll see if they can return to great form. And then this bench that we love, uh, Jordan Clarkson, 15 points on 17 shots. Second most shots. That's taken, and he only played 25 minutes off the bench. Classic Jordan Clarkson game. And then Hassan Whiteside, four points in nine rebounds in 17 minutes. We are loving it, folks. Real solid team here by the Jazz, and they are able to take care of business over the box. All right, Pistons, Nets, Pistons. We say this all the time. They've got nothing good. Jimmy, Jeremy Grant, their best player, 11 points, four rebounds. Sadiq Bey, their second best player, 9.6 assists. That's not going to get it done by your not top two players. And the only other players in double-digit figures was Josh Jackson off the bench, 12 points, and Corey Joseph off the bench in 13 points. So, what, like we know, this Pistons team is not good. Uh, the Nets, though, James Harden, first triple-double of the season, 18 points, 12 assists, 10 rebounds, getting it done. Joe Harris, 12 points, 2 of 4 from the 3. Kevin Durant, 23 points on 76% shooting. I mean, I know, I don't know why we're surprised looking at Kevin Durant's shooting percentage every single game, but it's always just so gosh dang consistent, folks. And I know Kevin Durant's one of the best players, and we shouldn't be shocked by it, but I'm just always pleasantly, it's not even surprised, I'm just pleasantly pleasantly glad I'm pleasantly glad every time I look at Kevin Durant's stats because I'm like this is the most efficient basketball player that there is in the entire NBA folks so Kevin Durant doing classic Kevin Durant things out here Blake Griffin 20 minutes back at the five here eight points five rebounds LaMarcus Aldridge still being fantastic here off the bench folks and we just are a little concerned on how long it will last we would love this to last and be as consistent as it was from game one to game 82 and in the playoffs and in you know in the finals and all that if they can get there uh you know LaMarcus Aldridge 21 minutes off the bench 16 points three rebounds a plus 13 on the floor seven of eight from the field absolutely fantastic and let's also shout out DeAndre Bembry 15 points and seven rebounds so the Nets get the big old win 117 to 91 an absolute blowout and then the last game of the night here Rockets at the Lakers this Rockets team, like we know, nothing really that great, but they kind of held their own a little bit against the Lakers. The Lakers were able to kind of pull away in the fourth quarter to get it done. So Christian Wood, I mean, still their best player, hands down, no debate, no question. Uh, 16 points, 13 rebounds, playing the four here, fantastic. Daniel Tice, three points, four rebounds, 21 minutes at the five. They need a better five. You could put Christian Wood at the five, um, you know, like they were kind of, I think they did that all last season. No, I'm pretty sure Christian Wood was playing the five the entire year last year uh but they move him to the four daniel tice we know is nothing good folks even with the celtics we never really liked him um you know didn't want him playing wanted robert williams over him and all that but here he is weasley 
<laughs> weaseling. Uh, it's a little disrespectful there. Uh, Daniel Tice weaseling his way into another starting lineup here for this Rockets team. Kevin Porter Jr., 13 points, 9 rebounds. Um, nothing great by this Rockets team. They only put up 85 points, folks. It's not a good team overall. And then this Lakers team, folks, Carmelo Anthony to start the season has been absolutely on point. 23 points off the bench here, efficient as heck. Uh, LeBron James, 15 points, 8 assists, 4 steals. Anthony Davis playing the 5 here, 16 points, 3 rebounds. Switching up their rotations a little bit with LeBron at the 4 and AD at the 5. So DeAndre Jordan doesn't have to play the 5 and LeBron at the 3 and AD at the 4. They move Kent Bazemore to the 3. That is our 10 minutes. And we actually did pretty solid here. We got like one more thing to say here and then we're done. Um, so they switch out around the lineup a little bit. Russell Westbrook still playing the one, 20 points, 9 assists, 8 rebounds, a great night by him. Not efficient and really some bad shots. I mean, you know, his shot selection is not the best and they always look erratic, but overall this was a good overall game by Russell Westbrook, a plus 25 on the floor. And that all we need here, Malik Monk just has to be a little bit more consistent and, you know, this is still early on in the season, so we will give him the benefit of the doubt. But uh, Malik Monk out here, 0 of 6 from the field off the bench, 18 minutes, no points, and minus 2 on the floor. So if we can get Malik Monk solid consistent um, production on this Lakers team that's really what's gonna be uh, holding this Lakers team back we need obviously Carmelo to kind of consistently play at this place not at 100% this pace the entire season but about like 80% of what this pace is at minimum and then if Malik Monk can solidify it this is gonna be a good Lakers team as we had and progress through the season they find a way to win and get the win 95 to 85. Alrighty, that is the NBA from last night, and we stayed within our 10 minutes, basically. I think we went uh, about 30 seconds over. I'll live with that. So that was the NBA from last night, folks. Do we have any great matchups on today? What to look forward to? We still got Monday Night Football, but else, do, but what else do we have on tonight? Anything good? Cavs at Hornets, Spurs at Pacers, Blazers at 76ers should be a good one. You know, just a test to see what this Blazers team can do. They haven't really had uh, great success against good teams so far this season. Wizards at Hawks should be a good one. Is this Wizards team the real deal, and can the Hawks get back on track? Bulls, Celtics, always great to watch the Bulls, Celtics. We're not really buying them this season. Raptors, Knicks, Nuggets, Grizzlies, Magic, Timberwolves, and Thunder Clippers. So a couple of good teams out, a couple of good matchups. But overall, we got uh, Chiefs taking the field tonight. So that's going to be our main focus. But we'll talk about the NBA breaking, down, breaking it down tomorrow on the show.